This is Houston Newsmakers with Cambrell Marshall. It started as a possibly routine look at the Houston City budget. Within it was a contract to have the tire treading replaced on city's trucks and trailers. A low bid was for a little more than $4 million, but something wasn't right. Houston City Council members Abby Kamen and Carolyn Evans-Shabazz saw that the low bid was with the Texas Department of Criminal Justice. They were using prison labor and the prisoners weren't getting paid. They asked that the contracts be rebid with important changes in the language of that bid request. And now it's turned into something of a movement to get the rules changed in Texas. Joining me this morning to pick up the story is Abby Kamen, District C Council Member, and Carolyn Evan Shabazz, District D Council Member. Good morning to both of you. Good to have this conversation this morning. Abby, tell me, since you're, you're one of uh, a chair of one of the committees there, what, what was the thing that got your attention? How did this get going? Well, good morning. Great to be with you. Um, I chair the Public Safety and Homeland Security Committee for the city. And back in May, uh, as you mentioned, we caught uh, in our office this small, not very sexy item about tire retreading. But when we looked into it, we realized, you know, TDCJ was the lowest bidder. But the reason they were the lowest bidder is they weren't paying for the labor and the work that was being done um, for the city. Uh, Council Member Evan Shabazz, how did you get involved with her? Did you, how did you guys get together on this in terms of the conversation? Well, actually, Abby reached out to me and I looked at the item and of course I was appalled. And so from that point forward, we partnered on trying to get it done. We sent a letter out to uh, our colleagues to let them know our position and we moved forward. And so um, I'm just very thankful that it you know, was caught and that we were able to make an impact. So now it was rebid and Abby, the contract now goes out, but it goes out, you pay more. So for the, for the one that won, and I would guess that you would say that paying more might be worth it considering the alternative. Absolutely. Um, you know, this is about basic principles of human dignity. Everybody should be paid for honest work. Um, and we have to address here in Texas and move out of lingering shadows of institutionalized racism in our criminal justice system. There are some things that um, are worth the additional expense. And, you know, unfortunately, we have to remember that arguments about saving money and financial gains off of the work of others was used uh, in our country over 160 years ago. Uh, Council Member Evans Savage, I know that your your grandfather, you've got your family is ingrained in this community. Prairie View, Prairie View A&M is your, I think your grandfather was the first president there or something like that. So you have this ingrained history of African-American treatment in this community. And not to say that all the prisoners are African-American, but the practice itself really became really something personal to you, did it not? Well, certainly it's something that you would mention my grandfather, because although he was president of the university, at the time he couldn't even sit in the same room with the board because uh, he was an African-American. And so it certainly has been something deeply ingrained in me and then in my work with the NAACP. But certainly we know that pay is not all extrinsic, it's intrinsic. And we are of the belief that you need to pay people for the work that they do. And of course, uh, in our conversation with TDCJ, I told them that I, I took it very personally and that, um, you know, I was looking at the Sugar Land 95, in particular, the recent death of Reginald Moore, which indicated that these practices are still going on. And so it was a very, very heated conversation, I'll say, at least on our part. You know, they tried to maintain uh, some type of uh, <laughs> uh, persona, but at the same time, we were very, very uh, adamant about what we felt in regards to this uh, payment. Count and I'm going to say, I'm going to change something around just a little. You know, they say all money ain't good money, but in this case, more money was good money because it was well worth it because we want people to, you know, get the value of getting up, going to work, you know, change 
some things that have been happening in the penal system. And certainly, you know, they say, well, they didn't have to, but we know how that goes hmm. because certainly there are other measures that can be taken. And what, what made me really, really, it was really bothersome to me is that when you want to make a phone call to a family member to say happy birthday or to check on them, if you have no money in your books, or on your books rather, you can't make that call. And so I, I thought that it was very dehumanizing to not let people have some type of value in their on their books. Yeah. And and it just it just didn't set well at all. Council so Member I, I just was appalled as well as, as Abby, uh, Council Member Kamen. And it just, you know, I'm just glad for the outcome. The mayor was receptive, obviously, mm -hmm. because it didn't come back in the same manner. And so we were very, very glad that the movement uh, started because actually um, Ron Reynolds is going to, again, take the bill to the legislative session. So it hopes that, you know, George Floyd and all the things that are going on right. will create a movement and not just a moment. So Council Member Kamen, how, what do you hope will happen as a result of what you started at the Houston City Council level going forward for the state of Texas and beyond? Well, I and I, I have to say it's been such a privilege to work with Council Member Evan Shabazz and for us to have the support of our colleagues, a majority of them on council and in working with the mayor on this. And I think it's uh, bigger than this. Texas is one of the only states left in the entire country that still allows uh, unpaid labor in our prison system. So this needs to be addressed at the state level. Council Member Evan Shabazz has been doing some great outreach on that. We know that it is going to be taken up this legislative session. Um, state Representative Alma Allen uh, and Representative Ron Reynolds are looking at this. They're going to be putting forth legislation and we have to continue to push for a statewide solution. I don't think any of us are opposed to job training programs. To the contrary, job training programs in our criminal justice system is important, but it has to come with pay. It right. can't be forced. And for example, we have to have fair working conditions in them. The tire retreading factory that uh, this contract was coming from doesn't even have air conditioning. Right. So I think we need to be looking at the next step and addressing how we make these programs a real success to ensure rehabilitation uh, and that people can, you know, live their lives in dignity, not just when they are out of jail, but while they are living there by, as Council Member Evan Shabazz said, um, being able to make phone calls, right. an average call, a 15 minute call in a state prison in Texas is $6.53. Right. If somebody doesn't have that money, they cannot make a phone call. Right. Uh, inmates are also required to pay $15, excuse me, $13.55, I think, per visit fee to get health care that they need. Right. So if you're having to pay for these services, you should be able to work for that. Um, and it's, again, just the right thing to do. Well, I appreciate your impact on what's going on here. It's an interesting story. I want to keep up to date on what's going on. Hopefully we can talk about it once some uh, legislation is passed at the State House. Thank you so much, Council Members uh, Kamen and Evan Shabazz, for what you're doing. And, uh, stay safe out there. Appreciate well, your time. Well, thank you so morning. much for thank keeping you. this in the forefront. Oh, you know, because the truth of the matter you're is welcome. people can't sometimes get the, the you know, support from their families. Right. And so right. this is just so very important. Thank you, Cambrell. You're and you stay safe as well. All right, we'll thank do. You. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Cambrell. And, um, you know, I think this is just one example of small things that can have a profound change on, um, you know. Right the next era of our civil rights movement in this country. Well, thank you for what you're doing. I appreciate your impact up to this point. I look forward to seeing what's going on after this. Thank you ahead. Thank you again.